Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, we're back again. It's January 27th, 2016. My name is Bart Cacciola. I'm the host at multirotorforums.com, and we're here with you tonight for another episode of Drone Radio Live. Tonight's episode is a little different from the ones that you've uh, seen us do the last few months. Um, instead of including news, uh, instead of including our safety or FPV, segments tonight. We're just going to stick with uh, our core special guests who are here from Rutgers University tonight. They drove up from New Brunswick. Uh, we have Professor Javier Diaz and his team of research students. They comprise uh, the design and development team for the Naviator Amphibious Drone. You might have seen it on YouTube. It was a big hit on the internet back in October. And uh, do we have a picture of the, the team, Bill? There we go. That's Professor Diaz, that's their Naviator drone, and three research students that he has with him tonight, uh, Marco, James, and Lucas. And they're gonna talk about the project, they're gonna talk about the parts that they've been working on, and Professor Diaz is here with us, he's gonna talk a little bit about how the project got started. Um, the first segment we're gonna talk about, though, is something new. If you watched the show last night, we did a special segment to welcome show sponsor and uh, multi-rotor forums advertiser, ProAdrenaline.com. And what they do is they are the North American distributor for the ProDad products, the ProDad family of products, which are um, Respeeder, ProAdrenaline, and ProDad. They're video processing software uh, packages that you could run your video material through. And what they do is they stabilize it, they enhance it a little bit. Respeeder actually takes footage that might have been shot at 60 or 120 frames per second and uh, it builds the frames to make it look like slow motion done using footage that might have been originally 300 frames per second. So it's really powerful stuff. And one of the things that we talked about last night was this new segment of the show, which is going to be called Pro Aerial Tips by ProAdrenaline.com. And this is Pro Aerial Tip number one. If you can't control it, constrain it. And that was... Uh, that was supposed to come later on in the segment here, but Bill's a little fast on the finger tonight. So we're just going to roll right into the, the pro tip, which is if you can't control it, constrain it. Where that comes from is from when we started multirotorforums.com, and I, I keep going back to the early days when we started. I have my Rutgers shirt on, by the way, just uh, to pay homage to my alma mater and to our guests uh, tonight that are from Rutgers. Um, but anyway, I keep going back to the early days of multi-rotor forums and the early days when uh, drones were not on the news every night. Uh, they weren't any better understood or worse back then, but um, we were kind of in the dark days of stabilized camera mounts. And a lot of us were putting a lot of time, I, I showed some of these examples last night. This was the MKTR, this was the one I was building. And I didn't really get into some of the funky details about them because I wanted to save it for tonight. Back in those days, these camera mounts were being designed by anybody with a CNC cutter who could buy some G10, draw something on AutoCAD, slap it together. Grommets were the big thing of the day. If you had a, a box of grommets and some G10, you were calling yourself a, uh, a camera mount designer. And grommets were not the best thing for vibration isolation, but that's what everybody was using at the time. So, me being the host at multirotorforums.com, I wasn't just working on my camera mounts. I wasn't just working on my aerial media quality uh, issues. Um, I was also hosting the site, so I got to see a lot of other stuff that the more serious aerial media people might have skipped over. And one of the things I noticed was there were a lot of people building very basic quads. Back in those days, I think it was APM 2.0 or something like that, or 1.5. I don't even know what it was on, but there were a lot of people flying very basic quadcopters with uh, GoPro 1s fastened directly to the frame with a strap of Velcro, and they would just fly it around, shoot some video. And uh, one of the things I noticed back in those days was that um, the footage, in some cases, was excellent. I mean, it was clear, there was no jello, there were no jitters or shakes. Other than the movement of the helicopter, the footage was awesome. Uh, a lot of us with our camera mounts were looking at footage that was jittery. Uh, you could see when the helicopter turned or reversed direction, the whole camera mount would load up the, the soft material that was supposed to be isolating it from vibration. It was loading up that soft material and as the helicopter reversed direction, 
that soft material would release like springs and the whole camera mount would have this ka-chung like it went over a speed bump or something. So watching the footage with the hard mounted GoPros, I thought, you know what, I'll bet you this thing that we all do called vibration isolation is a bad idea. And it became like a bad word in my shop. Uh, I got rid of all the grommets, like this camera mount, for example, when it comes to, if you can't control it, constrain it, when you have soft materials that are giving and giving and giving and causing the video to, to jump around, um, what you want to do is find where those freedoms of motion are because your camera controller can't do anything about all those jitters and shakes. So if the camera mount controller, whether it's your brushless controller, your servo driven gimbal controller, whatever it is, if it doesn't have the power to control the motion of the gimbal, you can't let the gimbal move. So what does all that mean? What it means is a camera mount like this one, and I'm, I have some newer stuff here. I'm not just gonna show you all my old stuff. Um, but a camera mount like this one, this is the one that I designed, okay? And you can see that it's pretty hardy. And um, when this was attached to the helicopter, even with the batteries on the, the helicopter frame, I was able to pick up the camera mount by here and carry the, ca carry the whole helicopter around like it was a briefcase. And this was very rigidly mounted underneath the helicopter. And there's no motion here whatsoever for the camera mount to move around once it's attached. The only way this camera mount can move when it's attached to the helicopter, uh, the only freedoms of motion that it has are motions that are actually controllable by the gimbal controller. So this camera mount wasn't loading up, it wasn't shaking, it wasn't jiggling, because the camera, the camera controller can't compensate for any of that. All it can do is roll and tilt. So that's the only way this camera mount should be able to move. When this camera mount was attached to the helicopter, if the helicopter rolled 40 degrees left, the camera mount went with it. It didn't load up and shimmy. It didn't unload as the helicopter rolled level. It was very fixed to the bottom of the helicopter with very minimal vibration isolation and the footage was awesome. Now, it suffered from all the weaknesses of a servo-driven gimbal in those days, which we all are familiar with, but it didn't have the jitters, it didn't have the shakes, it didn't have jello. So what it had was a minimal amount of servo-driven controller lag and we were able to fix that using our sponsor's product actually, which was Mercalli. So we don't have, uh, Philip Hinkle was supposed to join us again tonight. We're having technical issues with our Skype computer. Uh, our new studio manager, Bill, is working the, the board here and uh, he's giving me the, <coughs> that Phil didn't make it into the studio tonight via Skype. So I apologize, Phil, if you're watching the show, but I got your back. Um, Pro Adrenaline, sponsors the show now. They're sponsoring this aerial tips, this pro aerial tips segment. And so our tip tonight, like we said, let's put that back up again. If you can't control it, constrain it. Now, on a newer helicopter, let's get rid of this stuff, dinosaurs. On a newer helicopter, right? This is my Iris Plus. And some of you are saying, hey Bart, that's a pretty old helicopter too. But it's newer. And with this one, it has a tarot, uh, two axis camera mounts on here. And go ahead and get rid of the, the screen, there we go. So it has this two axis camera mount. And if you look at it, it looks pretty standard, right? But you can see there's foam on all four corners in addition to the little rubber pieces. So the problem with this camera mount and the problem with the mount as it comes from 3D Robotics is that if you take this and you do your little study that I'm recommending, if you take that camera mount, it's got freedoms of motion. Now it doesn't yaw, it's pretty rigid in yaw, right? But look at how much it gives in roll and tilt, okay? So if you're flying this helicopter around, you've got the GoPro mounted on there, what's gonna happen is as you come across and reverse direction, that soft rubber underneath is gonna let the camera mount jiggle. So you see that motion? The camera mount can't compensate for that, so you have to make sure it doesn't happen. And the way I did that with this particular camera mount, I took some foam. This is pick and pluck foam from a case that I had in my basement. I stuffed a wedge of it under each corner. So very simple. I took it out and flew it and the video product out of the camera was a thousand times better. Now that motion isn't as noticeable I'm not hard mounting it. I'm not going hard surface to hard surface. That transfers vibration. But 
what I've done is I've taken a freedom of motion out of the gimbal that the gimbal would never have been able to control and it would have always plagued the video product, okay? So what you have to do is take your equipment, sit it on the bench, get yourself a coffee, a beer, whatever you want, and just take the equipment, give it a little shove, a little move, find those little freedoms of motion that you didn't know were there and constrain them. Don't let them happen. Give that gimbal controller a chance to control the only thing that is free to move, which is the gimbal itself, and your footage is gonna be great. Prodrenaline has a product called Prodrenaline. Uh, that's their um, hobby grade product. It's about 50 bucks at prodrenaline.com. And uh, you run your software, or you run your video footage through the software, and it gets rid of whatever remaining jitters you might have that are more from the environment you're flying in than from the helicopter itself. And there's uh, their higher end, their pro grade product is uh, Mercalli V4 SAL Plus. And that is something that I used as an aerial media person um, when I was doing projects. Uh, I still would use it today if I was doing more video projects, which I'm not because I'm much more involved in running the websites and running the show. And actually, until I get a 333 exemption or they do a certification process for commercial ops, I don't think I should be flying because if it's associated with the show, what do you say, Bill? I think the FAA would give me the big smackdown, smack right? So that's our pro aerial tip number one. If you can't control it, constrain it. It's going to make you a better aerial videographer. It's going to get you much better footage. But at the end of the day, get the shot. Don't miss the opportunity to get the shot that's gonna make your project. If the footage needs a little help, bring it home, run it through Prodrenaline, and it's gonna be muy bueno. Okay? So, thank you again to Prodrenaline for sponsoring the show, picking up an ad at uh, Multirotor Forums. We appreciate it. You've got a great product. I highly recommend everybody give it a try.